well in the shop tonight kind of got a hankering to get a project done that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now and that is make kind of like a rolling system for my microwave and all my batteries and chargers. I don't have any plan for this. I'm just gonna kind of roll with the punches and see where it ends up. I started the project off by using some self-tapping tech screws to screw the charger onto the front of the tough box tote. I made the depth of my box the same as the hinge point on the microwave door. That way I knew it would open and close well. Then I just used three quarter plywood for the sides and half inch for the back. Glued it really well and then used inch and a half crown staples. Some screws wouldn't have hurt, but I'm kind of lazy. All right, well, I've got myself a box. So now, this will mount on top, like so. And then I plan on putting some caster wheels on the bottom, get all my batteries outfitted in here. Again, no plan, we'll just keep plugging away from here and see what happens. I think before I start on the partitions on the inside and screwing my chargers around the inside, I'm actually going to come around here to the back side and I want to add a telescoping handle. That way I can pull a handle up and pull it around and it'll have a couple casters on the back here. So first I need to make a sleeve for that and I'll probably just make the handle out of either three quarter inch poplar, plywood or solid wood, I'm not sure. Be sure to drop a comment in the notes below and let me know what you guys think of this style of video, whether you like the project style videos or not. I used three quarter inch plywood as my spacer for the handle sleeve. I know I'll probably have to plane a little bit off of the handle later, but this was just easier and that way I had the plywood grain oriented the way that would be strongest. I know this handle sleeve will undergo some stress getting pulled around and stuff, so I threw some Bessie clamps on it just to make sure I had a really nice glue joint that would be really strong. For attaching the sleeve, I made sure to use some really nice beefy screws with a hex head and washer. That way everything is tied together and glued really well. The goal here definitely isn't any kind of fine woodworking, it's just getting the job done as quickly and effectively as possible. It probably goes without saying, but anytime you want to create a handle opening or you have to change widths in a board, you always want to round things off versus just square cutting a notch. Uh, making things round makes things a lot stronger, so that's what I'm doing here with a hole saw and kind of a just using a can of 2P10 to make a radius to make this handle a little bit stronger. I ran the handle through the planer to get a strong 30 second off of the thickness to make it slide better. Well, it's actually 9.56, so I think I'm gonna call it a night and revisit this tomorrow and see if I can get it knocked out. I'm gonna probably end up cutting a slot down here and then putting a screw in the bottom so that whenever it pulls up, it's got a positive stop. Well, it's now two o'clock the next day. I haven't worked on this yet, but I'm gonna try and get a little bit done here. Yet this afternoon, I'm gonna make some ventilation holes for the microwave gonna ease the edges, sand it a little bit, and then I'm, I think I'm gonna actually just take this uh, tough system box off, put a coat of paint on it. I got some wheels 
for my casters and uh, we'll just see how this goes, what I can get done. Next, I'm just gonna make some holes, try and get some good ventilation around this microwave. Then I'm gonna ease all the edges with a round over bit and then sand everything up real nice. That way, I got a nice edge on everything and it'll take paint well and hopefully be more durable. Now I've got to figure out where I want to drill these holes for this all thread rod axle thingy. I kind of just positioned the wheels where I thought they should go and looked at that position in relation to how high my little swiveling casters would keep the box up off the floor and kind of pick the best spot which happened to be right over the plywood bottom. So basically that all thread will be resting right on the plywood floor. Now I'm cutting the notch for my handle stop. Nothing fancy here, just drilled a 5 16 hole on both ends, connected the dots with two lines, and I'm just gonna grab my circular saw and make that cut. But nothing fancy, it's just gotta work. I'll have links to the various tools and also the supplies that I used in this project, the microwave, the charger, the wheels, and all that stuff, and the notes below. I added ventilation holes all the way around this thing, and I tried to match uh, the places where I saw ventilation on the microwave, so I got lots here. A little bit back here, quite a bit on this side, some on the bottom, and a little bit on the other side as well. So that should make it a little bit safer being in this box like this. Next thing I've got to do, while I was at Menards today, I picked up some six inch uh, wheels with a bearing on the inside, along with a couple casters for the front, and then this piece of all thread. Uh, half inch all thread is going to be my axle. Normally I probably wouldn't paint something like this, but since it was for a YouTube video, I thought I would. I picked gray because a lot of times this will be in a dark room and I wanted the color to offset with my batteries and stuff. That way there'd be more contrast and I could maybe see better. Getting my axle put inside, this uh, DeWalt 20 volt bandsaw continues to prove to be one of my favorite tools. Whenever I got it, I didn't think I would use it, but it is just a tool that comes in handy all the time for stuff like this. I got my wheels on, I got my handle in. You can see my all thread rod goes across the bottom. I put swiveling casters on the front, solid wheels on the back, lock nut, and then got my stop right there for my handle. Went ahead and got the tough box screwed back onto the plywood box. It's screwed really well into the plywood box and also the handle sleeve. That way everything's tied together really well. To keep the microwave from coming out, I put a couple well-placed screws into some feet on the bottom of the microwave.
getting my chargers mounted, I decided to just use plastic zip ties. That way it's easy to move things around and not spending a lot of time with screws trying to mount those chargers. I also bundled up all my excessive cord length and used electrical tape to get things nice and tight and have good cord management inside the box. Well, like most of these projects do, it's taken a little longer than I would have hoped, but it's coming along nicely. So I have my DeWalt charger mounted to the front screwed on to the tough box and I've got my Festool battery chargers over here and there you can see a wire or the plastic ties going through there that folds those in same thing for my power strip I got that off Amazon with a whole bunch of USB ports as well as regular outlets my microwave cord comes up through the bottom. I got a hole right here. These are my headlamps. They charge via USB. So everything is plugged in here to my power strip and then this will plug into my outlets. It's working really good. Handle with the drop down like that. And you can also spin it around. Also with the tough box, it has these handles on the side, so for loading and unloading, you can pick it up. It's a little bit heavy, but not, not too bad. The last thing I'm going to be doing is I bought some of these 3D printed battery holders off Amazon, like so, and it'll actually lock in so they won't come out, but just a few screw holes in here. So I'm gonna mount some of these on the side. That way I can, whenever I'm on the job site and this is sitting on the job site, I can drop my charge batteries into the slot and that way they're not all just thrown into a big mess inside. Bought two of them for Festool 18 volt batteries also. So worked pretty good. Just slide right in and away you go. And one of the reasons that I used three quarter plywood even though it's heavier was because I knew it's just way easier to screw stuff to it and it's gonna be sturdier than half inch plywood would have been. I'll try and have links for these 3D printed battery holders in the notes below. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and drop a comment in the notes below. Let me know what I can do better or if you want to see more stuff like this. Alright, so here she is. Got my chargers, my power strip, uh, charging for everything I need and also plug in for the microwave. You can see I've got my batteries all mounted on the side. so. Whenever I'm on the job site, I can just, uh, I can keep them on the outside and separate what uh, hasn't been charged from what has been charged. And then whenever it's time to transport and load it up in the van, I'll just throw everything on the inside again, like so. On the side here, I've got my Festool batteries also, which locked in place securely, so. And then one additional dual here. It can be pushed around. It's got swiveling casters. Or you hold the handle up, tip it back, and pull it around also. Now this is a ton of weight of batteries that I've got on here right now but because it is the tough system tote, it does have these handles on the sides, so I can lift it up if I need to. Just a screw with a washer and a slot right here. It stops the handle and allows it to drop back in place. 
hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I have to admit, I'm quite proud of how this turned out. It's everything that I hoped it would be, and then some. As always, you can support by visiting the links. I'll have links to all these products uh, via Amazon. Those are affiliate links, those help support the channel. And the microwave and all that stuff, I'll try and link up also in case you want to build this for yourself. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.